Hello and welcome to this trader interview series. My name is Michael Taylor and I'm delighted to be joined by Mo Hurwitz, who is a full time trader in the US, but with a very interesting focus is he's exclusively shorts. Now, that is something that personally I find quite impressive because I've always thought that going long is is much easier. But today we're going to hear from uh, the man himself, Mo. So thank you very much for coming on. And um, yeah, it would be good, I guess, just to get a, a bit of an intro about yourself, how you got started into trading and, you know, obviously later on the transition to your own fund. Uh, of course. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, if I could just say one thing about what you uh, said, yeah, <laughs> it is it is easier to go long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not shorting because it's because it's easier, right? Um, and uh, as far as the um, introduction, so uh, um, I'm uh, you know Moshe Hurwitz. I, I live in the U.S. Um, I'm I'm an expat from Israel. I've been here for a very long time. Um, I started trading in 2014. And um, I had started uh, part time, uh, and you know, eventually when I got good enough, I, I moved to full time, and I did, you know, I, I did build um, enough of a skill set that I thought I can, um, you know, take this to the next level. And so I am in the process of starting a fund. Um, I, um, in, in case anyone is wondering, I, I, I short sell because. It's the first um, strategy that I saw early on when I started that I could understand. Um, I, it, it doesn't mean I was good at it. I was terrible. Um, <laughs> we all but, are when we start. <laughs> yeah, but it clicked in my mind. Uh, something about it made sense to me, and, and, and I needed that in order to be able to try and figure anything out. It needed, you know what I mean? And so that's the very broad stroke um, you know, journey. Mm, okay so did you ever try going long um what was the because i mean usually some traders you know there'll be a mix of you know i'm predominantly long but i've got shorts on the book as well but for you to just focus exclusively on shorting i think that's it, it's quite rare um so what were your experiences of going long uh so i um it's an interesting question because there's really like only two periods um, that I had any long exposure whatsoever. It was the very beginning because of, I don't think any of us start out trying to short. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the first few months I, 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 I tried going long in back in 14 and I just wasn't having, not only was I, I mean, I, I wasn't having any success. I, everything was frustrating. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, at some point, a few months into my journey, I saw, um, you know, I, I, I found, you know, the, the shorts and conceptually it made sense to me. So that was, so I just left longs alone uh, for uh, until um, a month ago. And during 2020 and 2021, um, I was exclusively short <laughs> and, and uh, I did well, I did well, but uh, it was it was tremendously difficult and it was it was incredibly hard for me to look at the action in 2020 and 2021 and just wait for the right time to short while seeing longs make money hands over fist mm. and again i had i had really really good years 2020 to my best but 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 to see all those longs make all that money that was that was it, it was it was tough for me uh and mm. so a lesson that I had left uh, in th that I took from 2020, 2021 was next time that I see an environment like that, I will put on some long exposure. And so for, and, and so for example, you know, about a month, uh, a month or two ago, you know, we've experienced this, um, you know, kind of a big uh, bear market rally uh, here in the U S uh, and it just absolutely swept small caps up with it. They went kind of berserk for, for about a month there. Um, and I, I, I keep my finger on the temperature and I did long. I, long, mm -hmm. I, I, I did a few, a few longs um, and, they, and they, uh, they worked out well. 
Um, and so I am looking, I, I am looking to add selectively, you know, and I think all the stars are aligned because I'm not very good at it. And so I really want, you know, everything, all the wind in my sails. Um, but it's, 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 it's a teeny tiny, you know, it's, it's something I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still quite interesting. Um, so yes. how, how did you actually get into trading most? So you started around 2014. Um, so you've had a good solid eight years now, but what was the, the sort of spark that got you in, into it? Well, um, you know, I'm entrepreneurial in spirit and ambitious in spirit, and I've done um, different, um, you know, businesses and such. And I, I think it was only natural that, you know, a person with that kind of inclination will eventually find the stock market. Um, and as far as how I, you know, kind of tried to, you know, educate myself on all of this, it was I had, um, you know, done, I, I bought like a, a, a ludicrous amount of books and, and, and read them all and, Did the you know, same. <laughs> yeah, and consumed, um, a, 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 you know, a, a large amount of, you know, video content. Um, I bought courses, I, I hired, uh, you know, people to teach me one on one, I, I basically didn't sleep for a very long time. Um, as I was, um, or slept very little as, as I was, you know, um, consuming all of this. And from that entire mess of, 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 you know, content and education, um, eventually, you know, stuff started making sense. Uh, little by little, it took me a long time. Um, and also, in addition to that, um, I went, um, you know, out of my way to meet people. So um, at any conference that I could go to, I went to events, reaching out to people directly, cold reaching out to them and such. And all of those things also had an effect of, you know, giving me a good amount of people um, in our industry. Uh, that, you know, I, I, I'm friends with, you know, now. Um, and that was, that was also valuable in my, in my education and in my, uh, even after the education, I mean, I don't think education necessarily ever ends, but even mm. once you're at a good place um, to be able to have a large group of friends that trade gives you a, a reference. Um, and that reference really helps you grow. You know, for example, you can see, that, uh, you know, a lot of people are going through, you know, similar things and you can mm. pick, pick and, you know, you can see where, what parts of you are kind of better than others, worse than others, what you can work on, you know, so that entire thing, that's, that's kind of how I got to, to here. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, that, that certainly makes sense. Uh, like read the group of friends thing, uh, because it, this, this can be a bit of a lonely job because nobody yeah. really understands, um, you know, like very few people ever have that gut-wrenching feeling in the stomach when you've lost a lot of money. And, um, you know, you, you put 10 trades on, and for whatever reason, you just can't make money, and then you start to doubt your strategy. You think, you know, am I, am I even cut out for this? And you start thinking, oh, well, you know, if the market doesn't change and I just don't make any money, I'll have to go get a job. Um, yeah. So it's just, you know, every, everyone who's been full time, I guess, has, has been through that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely I've got friends everyone. who. Yes. Sorry. I said truly everyone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a rite of passage almost. Mm -hmm. But what you were saying about, you know, I've got friends who are way better at me at things and I might be better at, at other things. And it's always handy to, to speak to people and learn from people. And, and as you say, it never never really stops but i'm i'm quite interested in your short strategy so do you have several patterns are you focusing on on one pattern and what what sort of time frame are you doing it on um yeah so um the you know strategy or patterns or whatever it's it, it, it's a little bit of a larger picture than that um so what I do, I focus on um, small cap U.S. equities, and particularly 
uh, companies that they're serial diluters. They mm. they exist, you know, only. We got plenty to... of them here. Sorry. We we got plenty of them in the UK. Oh, yeah. Serial diluters. Yeah. I mean, selling paper is very lucrative. Yeah, it is uh, yeah. for them. Mm. But there is a distinction to be made between. Uh, various kinds of companies. And there's um, a particular kind of, because, you know, raising money is fine. Um, but if you raise capital, uh, it, it, uh, if, if your market cap is is below a certain threshold, then dilutive capital raising is, is, is incredibly detrimental to stock value. And furthermore, if you do that and with the intention of using the raised capital in order to pay the executives and whatever is left over can go to the business, if at all. Mm. Um, it's a business that does not exist for its merits. It exists to raise capital. That's yeah. it. That's, and, 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 and so we have, you know, many, many, many businesses like that kind of at the bottom of the small cap m market. I heard somebody call it the gutter once. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's it's companies that we all know the end game. So it's a little bit easier um, to form a bias, mm -hmm. um, a correct bias, um, you know, most of the time. And so I, 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 I pretty much just look at that. We can I don't know I'm not allowed to swear here or not, but but but. Mm. You know, swear word companies. Yeah. And so <laughs> and and so um, and so. I look at those and I wait for a particular um, event to occur. Uh, it could be, uh, uh, it's essentially, a, I, I wait for liquidity events uh, to happen uh, at a very big price um, extension for very bad companies. Yeah. Because, in that, because in that situation, when there is a liquidity event, um, people are going to take advantage of that. And by people, I mean large shareholders, um, if it is a serial diluter, uh, then um, if I can see that 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 you know they have dilution ready to go, then that dilution is going to be exercised. You know, basically anybody that has a lot of either shares or paper to sell is going to sell. It, it, that's my that's my theory, right? Yeah. That's my yeah, that makes sense. It, yeah, it, it's also how it happens. Mm -hmm. uh, Ninety, not, it, it, like it's it's the 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 success rate of this theory is 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 extremely high. Yeah, uh, and and so the trick is, um, so, so you know, you asked me what 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 are my strategies, patterns, and time frame, uh, and it's just and and so I, I just had to kind of explain that 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 um, baseline there, and and so if we are on the same page here. Then, as far as patterns and timing is concerned, um, what I look what I look for is because you never know how far they can go before they're ready to be done and, and done. Yeah, that's and so, it. That's the problem. Yeah, and shorting is 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 uh, a very uh, it's it's dangerous. You know, mm. the, the, oh, the gains are yeah gains are capped, losses are uncapped, and so uh, and so what I do is I'm, I I use price action. Uh, um, to to decide when you know exhaustion has occurred, uh, because uh, typically the, these things are algo uh, dominated as well. Because once it gets over a certain you know volatility and 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 and, and volume, algos just come in. And oftentimes algos were there from the beginning because there were this might have been intentional. It, it's you know might have been an intentional you know price push before a dilutive capital raise or something like that. So. I, I, I basically, I look to see if the algo is done uh, and if there mm -hmm. isn't an algo, which they, there typically is, but if there isn't, then, you know, I want to know when uh, the balance has shifted from, um, you know, from thin to heavy. Um, and there's so many ways that, you know, inform me of that. And so it's, it's not a, oh, a double top pattern or something like that. Um, it's it's also um, the level of manipulation that occurs in the small cap, you know, high volatility space is is uh, is very high, and so there's operators on the other side, and they know what everyone is thinking, and they are playing everybody, and so it's it's understanding it's 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 understanding that that's what makes I can't just do like I don't know uh, 
a, a, a head and shoulders or something. Yeah, there's not. There's, it's got to be discretionary. So you were looking at the price right. action to right. gauge supply and demand. Um, so it sounds like you're not doing front side shorts. So you're not selling into strength. Is that is that right? Absolutely, do front side shorts. I oh, so you are selling large. into strength. I'm selling it. Uh, yeah, I, I because. I, I, I'm not gonna. It's rare that I'll put uh, uh, the scale on, like the large size, on mm -hmm. the front side. Right. But I am absolutely, I'm absolutely there on the front side. It's just so, like, I'll give an example of, you know, this. Um, so there could be a situation where um, I am, um, you know, observing a stock that you know is a short, and everyone knows it's a short, and everyone's shorting it, and I'll just, you know, sit there and wait and it'll do, you know, it'll have the big price um, spike, then it will go down, trap shorts, come back up by trap. I mean, temp shorts to come in. Yeah. Supposedly, supposedly it's the backside now, right? And, you know, trap them, go back up and eventually create some sort of, uh, 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 of an obvious ceiling and which shorts will, you know, risk against. And at some point it will run through that ceiling and run the stops, right? At mm -hmm. the moment that it runs the stops um, and I start to see what I like to call thick to thin, where, uh, uh, you know, the green candles become much larger than any previous green candle before on that day. That's, um, that's um, you know, uh, it could be margin calls or it could just be absolute panic by the shorts to cover you know when i see that thick to thin action i would absolutely lean on that yeah even though it is that is front side but but to my view um you know that's the end of the front side yeah uh, or, or, or or potentially in that you know hypothetical so so i'm always i'm like if there's a stock that i know i'm going to short and, and i'm not as active as my other fellow uh some of my other fellow short sellers i try to be incredibly picky and that does really help me but if I decide I'm going to short something, yeah, I'm going to be there on strength. Uh, yeah. I just hope that I can, you know, make the right, uh, <laughs> you know, see things right. Mm -hmm. So essentially what you were trying to do is, you know, when the shorts are getting really squeezed and, uh, you know, the price, the euphoria has just gone straight up, where they're getting squeezed and getting stopped out on margin calls, you're essentially selling into that so basically selling, shock selling calculations. Calculations. yeah yeah okay uh, that so, makes sense. But, but that's that's just one one easy to like you know uh, mm. uh um to to um say example but the, the the larger point is that i am their front side like i'm their front side and i'm their back side mm. my scale won't be there on the front side uh unless uh, on very rare occasions when a large, a mid to large cap stock behaves like a small cap stock, those happen every now and then. Uh, on that point, yeah, I'll, I'll have size on the front side because mm. that's, those are, you know, gifts. Mm. Um, okay. Um, and what, why is, why is that? What makes the, the mid caps acting like small caps gifts? So you'll have, so the stuff that I, because, because I mean, in, in a single sentence, because uh, gravity uh, is much more dependable on them than on the small caps. Ah, okay, so um, mean reversion. Yeah, so it's it, but 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 you know, again, like I I, I cannot you know, there's so much um, mm. um, um, small details to this. This is this is extremely broadly speaking. But you know, if you get um, a, a a a large cap that um, had you know such volatility to it that at some point I we get the same uh, um, situation as I previously described where there's you know an obvious point uh, of 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 stop running and then and then the stop running goes really really wild on a large cap yeah I mean like it's it's you know the float is really large you know there's a lot of shareholders it's it's likely going to revert to the mean as ah, you okay. said yeah where, that makes whereas, sense yeah you know small caps you know they might not they mm. they they can hang around like you know there's so little supply that demand can cause all kinds of strange things over there mm. yeah yeah i guess that makes sense um so you're basically looking of the the main strategy is to 
find a company that is a cereal diluter, you know, a lifestyle company, I guess uh, we, we call them here, and, and other unsavory names as well. Mm -hmm. But you were waiting for like a liquidity event, so like a spike, you know, the company might overeg some contract or something, people get excited, it spikes, and then you're looking, you'll be shot in front side, but essentially waiting for that capitulation to then get the size on and then ride it back down and then add on the way down. Is that is that pretty much? That's exactly that, that, yeah. that's exactly right. But I will only so um I won't add a lot on the way down. Like I, I will look to add um my scale as close to my original entry or as close to the top as possible mm -hmm. because um I've gone through a lot of in, in uh, you know a lot of a, a long journey in my trading to get me to the style that I am now and the style that I am now is I like to be as inactive as possible as far as executions that that that, that that's of course relative to myself in the past uh, I'm sure I'm more active than, than than a lot of people even now but um like I like to be as inactive as possible and I like to have as good of a of a of a average price as possible. And I know that sounds silly. Um, mm. Of course I do, but no, not of course. Like when, when, when I, you know, was trying to figure this out, I would have all sorts of entries and, um, all, and, and that would prevent me or make it harder for me to stay in a trade or stuff like that. And so I've learned that I basically uh, have a really uh, specific uh, not only specific stocks that I like to trade, but specific ways that I like to be in a trade. And it's, I like to be able to have as, you know, as high of a price average as possible so that I could uh, exercise the patience that I'd like to exercise because things don't go from down to up and from up to down, you know, that. Mm, and, yeah. and, and so you get and a so, lot of chop. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and since I'm a bigger picture trader, uh, I, I, you know, um, I don't, you know, I trade a particular size that allows me to trade bigger picture. That is to say, I don't put on tremendous sizes, but in order for that to be lucrative, I need to last, you know, a good portion of the trade. And so uh, that's, and so like the scale front side, you know, somewhere into the strength scale somewhere into the weakness, but as close to the strength area as possible and then let it go and and, mm -hmm. and and let it either work or not. Yeah. And I guess by by entering there, you're also like you're a lot closer to the point that way you can accept you would be wrong. Um, Correct. So, yeah, yeah. You, you sort of really limiting risk by getting a, a really good entry. I mean, I, I do something similar on um, it's called the breakout retest. So you will you'll often get a breakout and it will come back and it will test that support. Um, which was previously resistance, and it'll dip mm -hmm. through the support. It will clean out a couple of stops. And if you can buy right in that stop loss liquidity an entry, you know you might have this much risk, but you you get a much more outsized reward. Um, whereas in the breakout, obviously you your stop loss might be around that stop loss liquidity, but on the retest, you're actually adding at that point so you're getting a much better entry so i mean that, that makes complete sense i think that's that's really sensible that's, that that's exactly it but of course the caveat uh needs to be said that um like that's it's it's hard to it's it's a skill and mm. it takes a little while to build that skill because if you it, because if you um you know, decide to just try and do that willy-nilly every time something like that happens and you don't have the ability to discern between when it's appropriate uh, to do that and when it's not, then you'll you'll put yourself in trouble. And and and, and particularly on the short on, on the short side, like I'm I'm like I'm I'm really terrified. Uh, uh, um, because this I think you know well, these scary. podcasts is, <laughs> I'm scared for other people uh, mm. because podcasts like this are you know it's meant to you know uh, you know, there's listeners on the other side that are looking mm. to learn. And I cannot stress enough how uh, um, difficult it is to do short selling well. And so, um, and, 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 and even on the long side, right? Like uh, the exact mirror image example that you just described, uh, even then I would just tell whoever's listening, you know, just 
you know, if you're not there yet, then just use small, small size until mm -hmm. you learn to tell the difference um, and, and time things properly. Because I do, it is a lovely idea to be able to scoop, you know, um, you know, right, be, right at the, at the short stops and then ride it up or, or vice versa to be able to lean on, you know, strength when it's the top. It's, it's a lovely idea. It's terribly, terribly hard to achieve uh, with high consistency. And so just, mm. just a caveat for everyone. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's sensible. Yeah. I mean, anyone who trades a new pattern, absolutely. You have to start with, with smaller size and then yeah. scale that up. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's, that's really wise. Um, so are you, are you ever shorting frauds more at all? Do you actively look for, for companies that you feel are, are fraudulent or is it always the liquidity event? I actively avoid fundamental shorts, mm -hmm. um, such as, you know, frauds and, and, and activist uh, reports and all that stuff. Um, I avoid it. Um, it's not that there isn't a fundamental um, uh, a, a, a due diligence aspect to my um, decision making. There absolutely is. Um, uh, there's particular things that I, I'm not going to move without them. I have to know certain things. Um, such as um, float, uh, short interest, um, uh, financing, execution prices, you know, over allotments. There's a tons. This is like I, you know, tons and tons of stuff on the DD side that 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 that, that informs me. Uh, but I absolutely avoid fundamental shorts like the plague because. Um, so you have to decide what kind of a trader you are. You asked me earlier about the time horizon and I never got to answer it. And so maybe it's, it's, it's apt right now. Um, and, and, and so a fundamental short is, you know, somebody that says, you know, oh, this company is a fraud. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know the, the, it's going to collapse. It's all going to collapse eventually. But that eventually part um, is, it tends to be longer than people would like. Yeah, uh, because you, you, because the companies do everything in their power to 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 you know to stay afloat, and so I don't short things to zero, and I don't you know take fundamental because the danger, and, and not just the danger, the reality is is that when you take fundamental shorts, they take a long time to play out, and they oftentimes work against you for a while, and mm. you stay in that trade because you're so dead set. Oh. You know, I did forensic accounting. I did this and that. I know that this is going to die eventually. All right, cool. That's great. <sighs> That's not my time horizon or risk profile or position sizing for that matter. Because, uh, you know, while I did allude to the fact that my position sizing isn't terribly large, um, it, that's a relative term. It's a lot larger than a, than, 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 than a, than a you know, a fundamental uh, short because they cannot put a lot of size at all because they know they might go for a ride on the wrong side. Mm. Uh, I don't do that. And so, and so, no, I don't do fundamental shorts. I do uh, 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 per se. I mean, it is kind of fundamental, but it's predominantly price action. And my time horizon is between intraday to uh, uh, um, a few days um, at, yeah. at most. And so I look to be right, right away. And so as far as sizing goes, yeah, like, you know, if a normal short, uh, uh, if, if a portfolio short, like a Jim Channels or somebody like that, um, you know, dude that just holds an entire portfolio of long-term short, shorts, um, he has maybe 1% of, of, of his, you know, fund short per position or something small like that. Whereas an, an, an activist short, a person that, you know, puts out a report I, you know, they have, you know, the built-in catalyst of the report with what's known as day one in the industry, yeah. right? They're going to be 80% short the night before day one, right? The night before the, 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 the report comes out. Uh, me, I live in the middle between those two extremes. And so I'll have, um, you know, three, four, five percent uh, of, uh, of, the, of the capital short per position, normally and on on extremely high convictions uh um you know special situations i may have somewhere between 10 to 20 
uh, percent of capital short on a single position. And, and so I look to let that size position work throughout the day or at most for, for a number of days. And, and that's what I found that I could do successfully. I'm not, if I do 1% fundamental shorts, it's just, it's just not my style. You yeah. Know? yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. So uh, in the last few weeks, we had a stock called uh, Cineworld. Um, in the UK and it filed in the US for, for chapter 11 but you know I've been saying that's going to go bust for years like literally since 2020 and I think now it finally will like two and a half years later um, and, and if you look at the chart the volatility as well it, it got to like 20p at one point but then it, it was trading well over 100 um, earlier this year so you know you if you shot it at 20 thinking okay this is going to zero you're like 5x in the hole, um, which is just crazy, crazy volatility. I mean, I'm, I'm just yeah. not tough enough to to withstand that sort of thing. But yeah, you, you mean, you're absolutely right. When it comes to frauds, the catalyst can be really far away. And I've even heard of um, someone in the UK blowing up because, you know, I think they'll be right eventually. Um, but they just got carried out because people got hold of the stock, ran it up. And it just got to like a crazy, crazy share price. Um, so, I mean, absolutely, yeah, if, if you're going to do uh, fundamental shorts, I think one is dangerous and, and you've got to trade with a much smaller position size. Um, yeah. That really makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And um, I think that us, the uh, kind of the regular Joes, right, like we look for, um, you know, uh, we want to, we, we want to, like any person that's a new trader or retail trader, like, where all of us were a while back, you come in with this sort of, I think, I think I might be wrong here, but I think that a lot of us come with this desire to be able to extract as much gains, at, like large gains. Hmm. Like we hope to be able to extract large gains and we hope to be able to do that consistently. And um, fundamental shorts, that's not going to that's not really going to satisfy that urge if you if you want to do it successfully um, because you have to have if you're doing it correctly you have to have a, a, a small size compared to your capital uh, for reasons that we mentioned earlier and so it was never what I looked for anyway what I looked for was you know large gains consistently and to be able to see what I call you know short-term high probability trades. And to be able to, you know, allocate, you know, while not the crazy sizes that active shorts put, but, you know, you know, larger than 1% to be able to allocate, you know, 3%, 5% to something that, you know, you can make, you know, you know, even if you don't last for the whole move, like just the high probability part mm. of the trade on, 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 on stuff like that is anywhere from 20 to 60% gains. And so in order for you to, for you to be able to, you know, do, you know, 30% gains on a, on a three, 4% position in a single day, that's 1% or so, right? One, 1 point something percent gain on your entire capital. Mm -hmm. That's, that's to me in a single day, that's a lot. That, and to that be able lot, to rinse, yeah. repeat that. Yeah. To be able to rinse, repeat that day after day, after day, after day, that's how you do triple digit returns. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and so that's why, you know, like the, 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 that, 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 that hunger for, to put it as, as simply as possible, make a lot of money fast, right? Mm. That's what we want. Yeah. That's, you know, so that's why I live in that middle space. Mm. Yeah. I, that's something that took me a while to get my head around before, you know, I'd look for these big percentage gains. Um, and I'd, I'd, as in like, I'd like to capture a big percentage move of the stock but actually i found you could make a lot more by just doing 10 15 20 25 30 percent you know risking you know one to 1.5 one to two uh one one three and you just bank it and move on and yeah the share price might go higher you know in some cases it it might go a lot higher and i've even traded it higher up as well like lots of yeah. times and it just doesn't yeah. bother me because i'm looking for the pattern and, right. you know, like you're saying, getting in, capturing the move, banking it, 
moving on to the next thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to be said for compounding 10 and 20 percent as regularly. And, and you don't even need to hit a, a bagger in a single stock to, to make a lot of money. You can just keep going. It's, it's a valid it's a valid strategy. It's mm -hmm. it works for people that's mind is wired, you know, like like for that kind of, um, you know, um, P&L equity curve move you know, for those and for others, they're like, no, 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 that's too fast for me. It's too small picture for me, whatever. And that's fine. It's I, I like I, I there's like a simple um, truth that we all know. And I think most of us do not give it the weight that it deserves because it sounds so silly or, or simple. Um, but it is critical, in my opinion, that you trade in a style that fits your personality because there's money to be made in every single strat strategy that works. Um, but if you're a slow guy and you're trading a fast strategy, that's not going to work for you and vice versa. Mm. And so it's a valid, it's a valid, it's, a, it's as valid as any other strategy. Uh, it's just, it's a fit for me. And it sounds like it's a fit for you as well. Um, uh, it's just, it's man, it has to be, it has to be right with your personality because trading as is is such an emotional roller coaster and it's you know you have to be able to stick to your guns and you have to be able to make good decisions when it's hard uh and if you're doing something that's not compatible with who you are it's just gonna make it harder mm -hmm. yeah no i agree it's like um you know before i like in my first year stock came out with a profit warning and i'm i'm trying to trade it but i'm also trying to recruit people into jobs so i mean i was working full time and, and trying to day trade a stock which you know is obviously insane um <laughs> but yeah you know i'm not proud of it but we all make mistakes and, and we all learn from it um but we actually connected on linkedin mo a, a few months ago and you, you posted a, a picture of your equity curve and um I, th I thought that was like quite honest because not a lot of people admit it when things are tough. I mean, you know, you had a really smooth curve and uh, it, it wasn't like a steep fall, but, you know, it, it seemed quite steep in relative to the curve. But maybe you want to talk a bit about that because I found that really interesting. I do. And, and, and it, it, it's actually a, it brings up an interesting point from earlier as well. And so uh, I do have a, a nice equity curve. And within that curve, there is, you know, I actually counted it uh, yesterday uh, as I was going through it. I, there must be um, close to 10 um, little drops in that, in that uptrend uh, over the last year. And when you look at, when you look at, the, um, at the drops, when you look at the entire curves, the drops, they, don't, they, they seem like small blips in an otherwise uptrend. They don't seem like much. But I remember them. Mm. Um, I remember every every one of them, and and every one of them was tough. So we're talking about drawdowns of between um, five to fifteen percent. Um, those are not small drawdowns. They're not critical, but they hurt. Mm. When that when when it happens, it hurt, it hurts. Um, and and there was a scenario in which I uh, um, I guess the bigger thing I want to say is that. Um, even for, even for a guy like myself that has a pretty smooth equity curve, um, it, what, I still get hit like on a regular basis. And every time that I get hit, it still hurts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's still, it's still a mental and emotional, um, effort to be able to get past that without that, you know, affecting you. But, but, uh, everyone goes through that cycle of despair where um, you're like, I drew down 5% today. Yeah. You know, on a, like, 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 like you, you know, you, you, you start to go through all of those things that you mentioned, self doubt, fear, uh, fear for the future, uh, you know, all of those, all of those things. But, um, but, um, I'm not sure what uh, 
part of it you want me to talk about part of the experience um Pre- but, pretty much just that i mean it's oh uh, yeah it's you know you get a draw yeah. down and it might not look that big on the chart but at the time it, it does it does feel real and it's 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 not nice but you just have to keep going through it i will say i will say this about the subject um there is a the, and, and there is a part in there that that, that is you know kind of my speciality um, and, and, and something I do want to touch on perhaps is that, so my risk management is quite good. Um, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't take, uh, large losses. Typically there every now and then I will have a substantial, uh, drawdown, but substantial to me, you know, I've to me, like, you know, five, 10%, um, and is, 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 is as far as it'll go. Um, but the danger there is that because, so when I first started in the very beginning, I would take large losses, right? Mm-hmm. I'd make money, make money, make money, make money, and then take a large loss. It takes me all the way back. That's yeah. long in the past. But even now where I might take, you know, losses that, that, that will not be so tremendous, they might still, uh, they, when they, they, they do come and when they come, um, what might happen is that I might, it might affect my, my mental state and it may cause me to trade um, 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 badly subsequently. And so even though I might have, you know, a two, three, 4% loss on a single day, I may repeat that on, sub, uh, on days after that and cause a larger drawdown cumulative, cumulatively. I don't want to say that word, but, but and, and, and so what I found is that, is that, um, so like our first job is learning how to make or we perceive our first job to be learning how to make money and 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 we do that and then we have losses that you know teach us uh lessons and then at some point we hopefully we start to focus less on how to make money and more on how to not lose money when we lose or 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 or, or lower that because at some point you realize okay making money is not necessarily that hard but avoiding the giving back part is the harder part Mm. uh or could be and 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 so recognizing you know recognizing that and recognizing the fact that losses never stop um uh i don't know that i ever will stop losing money I, that's silly to 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 uh, um wish for then it's you're left with okay how do i deal with losses when they do come and so for me you know the it, it became okay when you lose money just learn how to do one of two things either um not let it affect your your mental state and come back right away which is great if you can if you have the you know the internal you know constitution to do that or if you can't then know that you can't and you know take a break and come back when you when your mental state is back to optimal um, and, and, and for me, I, I, I learned how to do the first one. Um, I do, I, I am, I am built mentally, um, uh, uh tougher than most, um, and emotionally. And so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm suited for this line of work. Uh, and, and, and I, and I'm able to, you know, three years of, you know, you know, trials and lessons learned and all that stuff. I'm able to practice what we call um, the market that takes is the market that gives, uh, which is, uh, and this is more for the short side, I believe, but like if, if something, you know, kicked my ass on the short side uh, yesterday, you know, and I thought it was a short yesterday and it went tremendously higher than that and kicked my ass, then odds are it's probably still a short. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and so the ability to um you know jump back in and 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 you know claw back the money that was taken from me um is is nice um but but it's it's just i think it's one of those two things because we're always going to have losses so either learn how to bounce back right away or learn how to just you know take take a beat and Mm -hmm. you know take a step back relax come back when you're mental because this has to be right yeah no absolutely i think that makes a lot of sense um I mean, what I do if I've taken a big hit is I will just reduce my sizes and yep. trade with a much smaller size and then scale back up because that to me 
is I, I don't I don't really want to walk away, but I realize that I'm not psychologically uh there at the optimum level. So I will just size everything down, go back to basics and, and get my confidence back up. Um but what what was yeah. interesting about what you just said there, Mo, is um, you know, you want to jump back in. You're you're not revenge trading, you're logically realizing that you know it, it's an opportunity it didn't work this time but it might work next time and and even more so because the move is more extended and you know there's going to be bigger capitulation so it, there, there is a difference there and i think it's it's just important that we highlight that because a lot of people will get stopped down and then want to make their money back but yeah obviously you want to make right, it back that's... but you've got to do it objectively Right, that's a tremendously important distinction. And thank you so much. Uh, I, I sometimes, you know, you get so stuck in like, you know, you're so used to your train of thought and the way mm. you do things that you forget that you miss something really important. Yes, never revenge trading. Mm. That's a classic way to give yeah, you. To, to just, that. <laughs> just, it's not. It's not that. And, and 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 of course, I went through a period of years when I, you know, would do that to one extent or another. It's one of the many things that, you know, you have to get rid of in order to be a good trader. So going back to, again, one of the earlier things where I said, where I tried to trade as inactively as possible in relation to my particular strategy, that absolutely includes revenge trading. Mm. There's none of that. No, 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 no. Mm. Um, it's not It's not like that. It's it's really, if it's, if it's, it's you know, a particular situation that, that, that calls for it. Yeah, no, no revenge trading, mm. no unnecessary trading. No, uh, I don't even like paper cuts, to be honest with you. Um, and so there was a period when I was trying to fine tune my executions uh, uh, to, to fit the strategies that I trade. I did a lot of, um, I did a lot of, um, you know, there was a period of time where I thought, well, it's fine. You could always just, you know, you could paper cut and, 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 you know, leave a position and come back to that position uh, when you think it works out for you. And, 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 and I overdid it, right? Like I kept on trying to go in and out and in and out and in and out. And eventually when the, the, the move finally worked out, I could only, whatever gains I had, you know, there was a lot of paper cuts be, be, before that that mm -hmm. it needed to make up for just to break even, you know what I mean? And so there for me, it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, that that's part that's that's part of it of why I, I you know, as many reasons why I try and trade this, you know, with as little ex executions as possible, and one of them is because I want to trade a bigger picture, and and so I want to put the right size with the right risk that I can let it either play out and I, you know, stop out when it hits my risk, or I can make gains when it, you know, hits my profit targets. And that's easy to, that's an easy math to do mm. when you're, you know, planning your risk versus, you know, being willing to do paper cuts and, and it's fine to do paper cuts, but if it gets to a certain point and I do do paper cuts uh, to a small extent, but there is a certain point where you can no longer really uh, calculate risk reward. It's just not, I mean, mm. you're, you're, you're kind of lying there, you know, and, and because it's it's a lot of paper cuts and so just that small distinction but yeah mm, yeah yeah i agree i mean I've, I've done that before i've tried to catch the top and then i caught a, a nice move eventually but it didn't outweigh all the paper cuts and I actually still made a loss so you know i was thinking i'd done quite a good trade because i've called the top and got short and closed it but then you realize all the the little losses before um so yeah it's it's you've definitely got to be aware of that um so i think it would be good also to to talk about your fund um which is is quite exciting um i mean personally i find it scary enough losing my own money so uh, for for you to go out and take other people's money i think you know it's huge respect to you because i think it takes a lot of minerals um, um but yeah how how is that gonna start is it gonna be the same short only strategy it's going to be the same, the same exact thing, but risk reduced. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, sizes compared to capital uh, 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 would be would be reduced for the reason that you just mentioned. Is that um, 
you're taking other people's money. It's 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 a lot easier to lose your own money. Um, and uh, so I'm starting um, a fund. Uh, it should be up and running in a, a, about two months or so. And I have a, tr a wonderful track record uh, um, that you can look at for my um, um, my personal trading, but no institution cares about that. Mm. And and so the the genesis of me starting this fund is that um, you know I got well, a I got you know good enough to be able to 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 take on such such a role. And and when I spoke. Um, and, and I didn't really consider it, but I spoke to some some institutional people, uh, uh, and you know they looked at my you know strategy and my results and all that stuff, and they said, yeah, there is a really. They told me that there's a there's a place in the world for a fund like mine, which is essentially um, uh, decorrelated, right? So mm. I can because yeah. I'm, I'm, I look right. So they you know they they told me there's a place in the world for a fund that runs you know something like what I run, uh, but no one, you know, institutions, you just, you know, without, without institutional or corporate track record, no one's going to give you money. And so, um, and so you need a, a sort of a track record. And so what I'm doing now is I'm raising money uh, essentially from people that know me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty cool. So it, it's cool, but, they, but, but like, I, I, I could not, you know, be more, with a sense of responsibility, shall we call it? Yeah. Um, and and so and so you know, going back to the fun and what it's going to do and what the differences are. Yeah, it's the same strategy exactly. It's the only thing I really know how to do well enough uh, to 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 um, you know do it professionally, um, but risk reduced because um, a the responsibility. So for people's money. And so if I'm willing to stomach a five, 10, 15% drawdown uh, over the course of a year by my funds, I don't want to expose, you know, my, my investors to that. I'd mm -hmm. rather expose them to drawdowns of uh, two, three, four, 5%. And, and the, there is, there is a space for me to be able to do that because um, my returns on a percentage basis for myself are, are, are quite high. And even if I reduce risk, which will reduce reward, um, the, 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 you know, if, if the ratio works the same, where if I, you know, decrease, de decrease, you know, where if I look to decrease um, risk by, by, a, by a, a order of magnitude of, you know, three, and if reward is, is reduced, you know, to essentially 33, percent of that of, of, of normal rewards as well the the rewards that will uh, remain are still going to be extremely high for you know a fund format or for investors that are just going to mm. passively put their money in so I, I I really like that idea of yeah. reducing risk and having <laughs> enough rewards that you know I, I like the idea of reducing risk mm. yeah I mean it's, it's always good you gotta stay in business first and foremost um, yeah. <laughs> but will, will you be running Will you be running your personal fund alongside the fund? Like, how will that work? How will you decide positions? I put my, I put my money in the fund as well. Ah, okay, right. To, yeah. You can't, then there's conflict of interest. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. I, um, I think there's rules around that here. Um, so, so you're going to be putting even, your even own money in the rules, fund. there isn't rules, it's, 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 it's de facto a conflict of interest because who are you going to, who are you going to uh, execute the fills for mm. first? Yeah. Yeah, you would either have to trade completely different stocks or strategies. Right. Um, right. Otherwise, it's just too much overlap. Right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I do, um, you know, manage family money, but it that is completely different to what I do in the main. So, it's it's separate. You know, I've never got that problem where oh, there's a profit warning. Okay, I'm going to sell mine first and then I'm going to sell it down. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I never, never ever have that because it's completely different. Right. Um, so that's a decision I don't want to have to make. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so if if people are interested in in learning more about you or about the fund more, how, how can they do that? Our LinkedIn is the one place online where I'm active. Mm -hmm. um, so uh I'll yeah any, any, anybody for, for any below. reason 
Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, um, you know, Mo, well, thanks a lot for this. I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've, I've learned quite a lot. I mean, I've, your strategy, I, I understand it. it. It's probably not for me, um, but, you know, there, there's a piece of the market for everyone. I mean, you know, some people are literally doing one pattern day in and day out, and uh, that's all you need to be profitable, I think. Um, you know, people overestimate how much you need to know sometimes you just need to know a very small part of the market um yeah but thanks a lot and and thanks for being here i really appreciate it my pleasure thank you for having me